What's going on everyone? My name is Suboptimal and I'm just a typical Indian guy who makes videos about web development and productivity. In this developer productivity video, I'll be giving you a complete walkthrough of my Visual Studio Code integrated terminal workflow. And this video is going to be split up into four parts. First, I'll go over my previous workflow with iTerm2. Second, I'll go into the reasoning as to why I stopped using iTerm2 and switched to using the VS Code integrated terminal. Uh, then we will look at my current VS Code integrated terminal workflow. And finally, we'll dive into all the key bindings that I set up to optimize it. I know that some of you will be curious about my exact setup, so I just want to point out that all of my VS Code and iTerm2 settings can be found under my github.files repository. And before we get started, I'm just going to ask for one small favor from you guys, and that is to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. I recently quit my tech job to pursue YouTube full time and I make less than a dollar a day. So a small like goes a long way in helping me and the channel out. Cool. With that out of the way, let's jump right in. So let's get started by just looking at my iTerm2 workflow. For those that don't know, iTerm2 is just a terminal emulator for macOS. Basically, when I used to work as a full-time software engineer, what I would have is a iTerm setup like this. On the left side, open up the directory where I want to run certain commands, and then I would open up another tab like this on the right side, CD into that same directory. So let's go to desktop dev view tests cd into code mirror example and then i'd run npm serve so basically i would use the left side of this terminal for running specific commands like maybe a uh, maybe i want to run a gst to check out the git status or maybe i just want to like go into files on the left side and on the right side is where i usually run the server uh, this was my original setup for iterm2 uh, let me just show you guys here right i got uh, three separate desktops. So all the way on the right side, I got iTerm2, then I got my code in VS Code, and then I got Google Chrome. So usually what I would do is I would run the server here, and then I would press uh, Control J to go to VS Code, type something here, and then you know go to Chrome to see what's going on because I used to work as a full stack developer. So usually I would just switch between you know VS Code and Chrome. And every once in a while, I'd have to go to the terminal to just maybe like rerun the command or uh, debug some issue. So that's what I used to do before when I was using iTerm2. So now let's talk about why I decided to stop using iTerm2 and start using the integrated terminal inside of VS Code. In case you guys couldn't already tell, I spent a couple hours, maybe even a couple days configuring my iTerm2 to get it exactly what I want it to be like. I can effortlessly create new panes inside of iTerm2. I have all my commands working. I can go between different panes. I can, you know, do a lot of stuff. And I spent a lot of time sort of setting all this stuff up. And now I sort of just left it behind. So, you know, let's try to understand why uh, I felt like iTerm2 wasn't valuable for my workflow and the thing is um, just think about you know what i do as a full stack developer right as a full stack developer right i'm mostly going between you know my code and google chrome so usually i type something inside of vs code and then i go to google chrome and every once in a while i'll type something inside of vs code and then i'll go to chrome and something will break and it's at points like this that i need to go all the way to iterm2 so uh, it takes three steps to go to iTerm2. And whenever I, you know, fix fix it or look at the logs in iTerm2, I usually end up going back to Chrome. So it's, um, for me, the main issue was the amount of uh, friction there is to go from Chrome to iTerm2. And again, I'm not someone who has a huge desktop. I don't have something super wide. And I really like to focus on one screen at a time. So whenever i'm using the terminal i don't like having anything else up whenever i'm using vs code i don't really like having anything else up so for me it didn't make much sense to split it in half screen or anything like that because i felt less productive if i could only see half of a screen of something right so it's just one of those psychological things and really it, it just came down to like 
going to iTerm2 caused a lot of friction. And when I first thought about what to do, I figured, okay, I know a lot of people tend to configure their iTerm2 with Vim so that they can code and you know go to the terminal in the same spot and then they don't have to open up any editor like VS Code. And I was gonna go down that route, but then I figured, well, actually all the configurations that I have in VS Code, now I have a lot of configurations in VS Code. So I figured that if I wanted to go all the way to setting up Vim and you know configuring my terminal and doing all these things, I should at least give it a shot inside of VS Code because I know VS Code had a terminal. I was like, okay, I'll just give it a shot. See if um, the VS Code terminal is enough for my workflow. And when I tried it out, right, there were a few issues that uh, came up to be, but in most cases, the terminal worked out just fine. Now I still have the full terminal screen, but you know, I'm just toggling it and it doesn't require me to go to another desktop, which is actually like much slower than just toggling a terminal screen inside of VS Code. So, you know, this friction uh, was greatly reduced for me, and that's why I decided to go all in on the VS Code integrated terminal. So let's look at my uh, VS Code workflow. When you first open up a terminal, it'll look something like this. Oops, it looks something like this. And what I like to do is I like to maximize the terminal pane because I don't like seeing code when I'm working inside the terminal. So if my terminal looks like this after I just toggled it, then what I do is I press, uh, I think it's command control enter, I map that command. And so now the terminal is full screen. Now if I toggle it, right, if I toggle the terminal with uh, control T, which is again, another key binding that I set up, then you know you get the full screen terminal, Otherwise you get your entire code. Now, the next step is obviously to start up the server. So I press command D to open a new pane. Uh, because it's using Zish, I, I have my Vim key bindings and stuff. CD, uh, view, test, code mirror, right? Now I can use the same ZSH command. So I can press KJ to enter Vim mode. I can delete can delete. I'm using all these Vim commands. I'm getting most of the benefits that I had before inside of my integrated terminal. And now I just run npm run serve. And so now I have my uh, server on the left side and I press command J to go to the uh, left terminal. I can press command K to go to the right one, CD into that same directory, oops. It's in view test, so code mirror, and then we do um, GST. So basically I got the same workflow going inside of VS Code that I did in iTerm2. The main difference here is I don't have to traverse between three, three separate desktops. I can just go between VS Code and Chrome. And if I ever need the terminal, I just do, you know, control T to open up the terminal and everything is there. And I feel like this is a lot faster than going to iTerm2. Um, but there obviously are some cons to this and one important con that I do want to mention is that um, I'm pretty sure you can't really do horizontal splits inside of VS Code. Um, you can only split it vertically. So now that you guys understand my integrated terminal workflow, let's take a look at uh, how I was able to set it up with some important key bindings that helped me do all the things I needed to do. So the first command I want to show off is control T, toggle the terminal. So usually you can toggle the terminal with control, I think it's control tilde, but I don't like reaching for tilde because it's just like a really weird uh, finger position for me because I have to use my ring finger to, uh, to hit the tilde while I'm pressing control with my left hand. Yes, I don't know how to press control with my right hand. I just never do that. So it's just a weird combination. So I made it control T. So that opens and closes the terminal. One very important command is uh, control command enter. So this maximizes the uh, terminal. When you open up your terminal, it looks like this. For me, I press uh, command control enter to maximize the pain. And this is just a, uh, a way for me to, you know, keep my mind clear, right? Again, I don't like looking at code when I'm using the terminal. And I like my terminal screen to be really big because again, I'm not working with a huge desktop monitor or anything. I have, you know, just like a 20 or 24 inch monitor here. And so I like to see everything on screen. And the next one is gonna be uh, Command D. So this is just a easy way to split the terminal. So you'll notice here, right, I have two panes. 
And so in order to split the terminal, I think what you previously had to do was like command uh, slash backslash or something, but I remapped that to command D. So, you know, pressing command D is gonna open up a sp split a pane in the terminal. These two commands are also very important. So you got command J and command K. And what they do is allow me to switch uh, panes inside of the terminal. So let me show you guys, right? Um, occasionally, you know, I want to switch between the right terminal and the left terminal. And you could do it with like left or I don't know, there's like some complicated command here. Alt command down, alt command up. I think these are the original commands to switch between a left and right pane. Usually I press command J to go to the left and then I press command K to go to the right. It's just, you know, one of those like, I don't want to get my fingers off the home row type situation. And the last one is command W. So when you press command W, it usually closes a file inside of your project, right? Like you press command W, it closes a file. But I wanted to also close my terminal with that same command. So if I ever open up the terminal like this and I have two separate panes, I can press command W to close one pane. I can, you know, press again, pressing command D to open new panes and then press command W to close the terminal. And so that was just a sort of ease of use for me. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you guys can sort of see the power of the integrated terminal in VS Code and maybe even integrate it into your own workflows. Obviously, it's not a one size fits all, but it works in a lot of cases. So definitely worth considering looking into if you want to uh, work inside of VS Code. And if you enjoyed the video, then hit that like button and consider subscribing for more suboptimal content just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.